great. I think we're about ready to get started, right? Um, yes, if you wanted to. Great. Oh, okay. You just let me know. Good morning and welcome to this important and exciting announcement for Canadian Agri-Food Automation and Intelligence Network, or Kane as we like to call it. My name is Carrie Wright and I'm Kane CEO. It's my privilege to be your host today and with me on stage is our board chair, Laura Kilcrease, and we're pleased to be joined in Ottawa by the Parliamentarian Secretary of Canada's Minister of Agriculture and Food, Mr. Francois Gruen. Thank you. Um, Minister Bubo was unable to attend, and we want to thank Mr. Druin for stepping in in short notice. Uh, in this spirit of respect and truth, we honour and acknowledge that we are on the traditional Treaty 7 territory of Blackfoot Confeder Confederacy, which includes the Siksika, Kayanai, Pikani, Iaxe Nakoda, and Tusina nations. We further acknowledge this territory is home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3, with historical Northwest Métis homeland. If you bear with me for a moment, uh, before we start, I'll explain the format of this event. First, while we wrap up around 9.15, uh, any reporters who want to talk to Laura or I afterwards, please do so. And this is a hybrid event, so some participants joining us through Zoom feed. Um, if you have any questions during the Q&A, just send it to us in chat and we'll answer those. Um, and I think with that, we'll get started. So. I want to introduce Laura Kilcrease, um, born in London, England, uh, recruited from Austin, Texas, where she spent over two decades as the founding CEO of Triton Ventures. Laura Kilk served as a member of Alberta Research Innovation Advisory Committee for seven years prior to joining Alberta Innovates in 2017. She's widely recognized as a key contributor to the transformation of Austin from its dependence on oil revenue to high tech prosperity and ultimately becoming the U.S.'s number one city choice for entrepreneurs. Having spent over 25 years commercializing technology, Laura brings extraordinary track record in innovation ecosystem performance and design. In addition to a myriad a my, a my of accomplishments delivering during her time in Texas, uh, since arriving to Albert Innovates, she has steered the organization's restructuring, spearheaded a program assessment initiative, and launched in ventures, which PricewaterhouseCoopers estimated catalyzed some 200 million in potential deal flow in 2019. With achievements that have gone, these achievements have not gone unnoticed, and she's been formally recognized with the Ernest & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award, Austin Business Journal, Profiles and Power Award, and University of Texas Macomb uh, School of Business, Trailblazer Award. A dedicated community leader and a support to women's leadership. Um, she's been recognized by a number of institutions in this role, and it's something that she shows me every day as our board chair. So thank you, Laura. Thank you, Kerry, and good morning, everyone. Um, I very much want to thank Parliamentary Secretary Druhan for being here and everyone else who's joined us both virtually and in person here at InVentures for this news conference. You know, when we first proposed the Kane Entity to Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada, or known as I said, three and a half years ago, smart farms were just appearing on the agricultural landscape. Since then, the notion of a facility dedicated to demonstrating and validating different kinds of ag tech has taken off in an enormous way in Canada and indeed around the world. This growing popularity is easily explained. Simply put, smart farms can deliver valuable results, which is why they are one of Kane's three areas of focus along with automation, robotics, data collection and analysis. Very synergistic. Until now, the digital farm has been out of reach. There's been no way to manage the data. However, data-enabled innovation allows us to manage large, complex blocks of information to improve decision-making, predictability, and efficiency. Smart agriculture and smart farms connect agricultural equipment manufacturers, food processing, data and analytics, and pure technology to bring food security within reach of everyone. 
You know, Canada can have a tremendous impact on sustainable food production. And I think as we've seen with global events, you know, this is not something we need to take lightly now. With the global population forecasting to reach over 9 billion people by 2050, and the climate targets in place, there is going to be even more demand for high quality, sustainable products produced on a smaller environmental footprint. Which brings us to today's announcement. One of the requirements of Keynes projects is that they have at least two active partners from both a participation and funding perspective. However, over the time we've been supporting projects, we've heard that it can be difficult for entrepreneurs to assemble their teams um, and meet the requirements of a competition within a very strict set of guidelines that we had previously required. You know, we have to be cognizant. We're dealing with the farm, the farmer, the food, the food processor, and everything in between. And there are natural cycles to that. So we're trying something new. We're changing our application to a continuous intake process so we can align with those that are interested and in their cycles in, in their uh, industry. So whether it's the farmer or the processor, we can align with them. This means we'll accept applications for proposals whenever they come in, and we're actually going to designate $5 million available in this case immediately for these continuous calls. Basically, it means that Kane is launching a smart farm funding call with no submission deadline. Proposals can come in as they're developed, as people see fit, and we will process and do our due diligence on them just as we would anything else. But we're doing it on the applicant's timeline and not on ours. We hope this is going to encourage not just more entrepreneurs to apply in the ag sector across the whole country, but we also want to see more collaboration on these projects so that we can make that kind of input in, in the agri-food business that we think is, is uh, possible and we're actually already starting to see. Kane is driving transformation change through investments like this $5 million continuous intake funding call to impact performance at every step of the agri-food value chain. So from ranch lands to fields to restaurants to fork to producing healthy food for Canadians and indeed producing healthy food that we can export to the rest of the world. With that, um, I want to thank very much Kerry Wright for all of her hard work and her team at Kane. And I'll turn it back to Ker Kerry because I'm sure she'll do a better job of answering questions than me. Thank you, Kerry. Thank you, Laura. Um, right now, I'd like to introduce um, Frances Druin. Um, Frances was first elected the Member of Parliament in, for Glengarry Prescott Russell in 2015. In this role, uh, Mr. Druin served as a member of various parliamentary committees, associations, interparliamentary groups, including the Special Committee for the COVID-19 Pandemic and Standing Committee on Agriculture and Agri-Food, where he advocated for local farmers and economic growth in rural areas. He's chair of the Canadian branch <clears throat> of the Assembly Parlementaire de Francophone and a former vice chair of the House of Commons Standing Committee on Government Operations and Estimates. Prior to being an elective official, Mr. Dewan served as a special assistant to the Office of the Premier of Ontario and worked in the private sector as a government relations consultant. He was previously manager of government relations at Startups Canada, an organization that connects Can Canadian entrepreneurs and startups in the support of community partners and resources they need to launch and grow their businesses. Mr. Druin is an active member of the community. He is a founder of the annual Francis Druin Charity Golf Tournament in support of United Way in Eastern Ontario, and an event dedicated to providing support to vulnerable youth in the region. And as chair of the Parliamentarian's Caucus for the fight against ALS, he helps raise an awareness of the challenges facing Canadians living with ALS. Um, <coughs> Parliamentarian Secretary Druin, I pass it over to you. Thank you, Carrie, and hello, everyone. On behalf of Minister Champagne, I'm pleased to be here with you all. I do want to acknowledge, acknowledge that I'm delivering these remarks on the unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe peoples. And I'm also delivering this, as you can see from my background, in a closet on Parliament Hill. <laughs> Merci, Carrie, et bonjour à tous. Je suis content d'être ici au nom du ministre Champagne. Thank you to the whole team at Kane for your amazing work over the past three years 
You have brought together companies in Canada's agri-food sector to create automated and digital solutions for farmers and agribusiness. And you have supported some exciting new projects across the country, focusing on robotics, automation, and the power of data. Projects such as digital traceability for barley, soil potential software, and precision ranching. The Smart Farm Project is helping to get powerful new tools and technology into farmers' hands as quickly as possible. This includes everything from sensors for gathering data on plants, soil, livestock, and equipment, and new software for real-time analysis. Smart Farms helps farmers test new technologies to make sure they will work in the specific conditions on their farms, and to make sure they will give you a good return on their investment. And at the same time, the Smart Farms Project is helping to train a new generation of agri-food innovators. Through your partnerships with colleges and universities, students now have the opportunity to evaluate the sustainability benefits of new technologies in real farm conditions. Innovations has always been a critical pillar of Canadian agriculture. It is key to help farmers grow their productivity and efficiency, improve their sustainability and increase profitability. Canada is a global leader in agricultural innovation and technology development. Farmers are already using tools such as GPS, satellite imagery, automation, drones, and other digital technologies to practice precision agriculture. As we know, we are just scratching the surface with technologies such as artificial intelligence and blockchain management. Over the past few years, the, new app, the need for agri-food innovation has never been greater. The pandemic and now Russia's illegal invasion in Ukraine are applying significant pressure on our global food supply chains. With one of the world's leading wheat producers in crisis, the world is looking to major producers like Canada to step up. But to do so, we need to rely more than ever on agricultural innovation. And that's why today I'm here to announce a federal investment of $5 million to help Kane expand the network of smart farms across Canada. This new call for funding will build on the success of the first smart farm. It will open up even more opportunities to test and validate new technologies in robotic automation and data in real farm conditions. And removing the deadlines for submissions will encourage even more innovators and entrepreneurs to take up the challenge. Votre réseau de fermes intelligentes prend de l'ampleur à l'échelle du Canada et c'est une excellente nouvelle. Aujourd'hui, nous annonçons un investissement fédéral de 5 millions de dollars pour appuyer ce nouvel appel de financement qui va miser sur le succès de la première ferme intelligente. This is met investment is part of a total investment in the network of 50 million under the Canada Strategic Innovation Fund. Our Strategic Innovation Fund is also supporting the Canadian Food Innovation Network with funding of up to 30 million dollars. If we continue to invest in innovation to help Canadian farmers capture exciting new markets. By supporting innovation solutions for Canada's agricultural sector, we are helping our farmers improve the efficiencies within their business while finding ways for them to respond to challenges. Our government will continue to help Canadian agricultural innovation get their ideas off the ground. And to help farmers put those ideas to work on their farms to strengthen their businesses, Canada's economy and global food security. I really look forward to seeing the next group of Canadian ag innovators. Our sector is in good hands. J'ai hâte de voir les avancées dans la prochaine génération d'innovateurs canadiens et en agriculture. Notre secteur est entre bonnes mains. Merci. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Druin. I can't tell you how much we appreciate uh, your participation today. Um, and with that, we'll open up to any questions.
Mm. Well, right now we've kind of started our smart farm opportunity um, from our first closed competition with Olds College, um, like Land and Glacier Farm Media. So those three are connected in a network. Um, we're looking and hoping to expand to have smart farms all across Canada. These would be oriented in a number of different aspects of agriculture, um, some dairy, livestock, large acreage crops, horticulture, um, greenhouse. Uh, those are, there are a number of ways that people could look to connect into the network, and we're really encouraging that we would love to see this all across Canada. If there are any other questions, fire them away. Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll wrap things up. Uh, yeah, we have a question here. Do you see this as an initial investment given the expense of the new technology? Well, this is what one of uh, investments that we're doing. Um, we support robotics automation and data-driven decision making. Smart farms are a component of that, and absolutely uh, beneficial. We we really believe. In terms of cane, it's a really unique aspect of what we're offering. To be able to op the opportunity for, for projects to validate what they're doing in their research, demonstrate it to farmers and others that are interested in the ag tech space, and also to train that next generation of farmers. So absolutely, I think this is a, a vital component and will help support a lot of small and medium-sized enterprises that are looking to work in the ag tech space by giving them the opportunity to have a place to actually do their work. Is there a cap on the size of each grant? Kane funds projects up to three million. Now the, uh, the opportunity comes with, uh, we would require to have two small medium sized enterprises and we do fund at 40%. So we need those enterprises to come in in the project, but we do a maximum of 3, per pro 3 million, pardon me, for, per project. And are there any particular regions that we'll be focusing on? All across Canada, actually. Um, we've, we've started in the west, but we're looking to grow that uh, coast to coast to coast. And that looks, that looks like it. Any other questions, or are we going to wrap it up? Well, what are the timelines for the grant? Um, we'll be, what we're planning to do now is, is this announcement is we're look, going to be looking at intake on a quarterly basis. So we'll have all that posted on the website, but we will be reviewing them and continue to support projects as they come in by guiding and advising so that they can pull together their application. Okay, going once, <laughs> going twice. And so, thanks very much for joining us, uh, guys. Thank you, Eric. Um, so we've reached the end of the announcement. I wanted to wrap up by saying thank you to all of you for joining us today, and once again, uh, expressing our appreciation to uh, Mr. Duen for taking the time out of his schedule to be able to, uh, to join us today. Um, and as noted, if there are any other questions, um, please, please approach me at the end, and, and we'll do that. So thank you very much, everyone.